Guys, this morning, I'm really excited because we have with us someone who is going to help you take all limiting beliefs off your life, off your business. He's going to show you that when you dig deep, you can achieve more than you could ever possibly imagine. And he's going to wipe away every excuse you ever thought that you had. Today, I'm pleased because we have with us Chris Nikich. Iron Man, Chris Nikich, and his guide, Dan Greeb. Good morning, guys. How are you? Morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Well, Chris, if people don't know your story, I kind of just want to set the stage. Um, you are someone who's exceptional. You are someone who has done some things in your life that very few of us have ever ever even dreamt of accomplishing and I want to I want to tell that I want you to tell that story today because it was last year I believe towards the tail end of the year that you accomplished what's known as an Iron Man and for anyone out there that doesn't know what an Iron Man is I mean think about the most grueling race possible and then multiply it by 10 I want to ask you first, Dan, can you describe an Ironman? Can you kind of set that stage for us? What what does that look like? What does it mean when someone competes in an Ironman? Well, you know, an Ironman is a timed event that only 1% of the population in the world will complete. You have 17 hours to do a 140.6 mile race. And Chris, why don't you break down uh, the disciplines of that race for us? So how long is the swim? Or two, four, or ten. This swim is two point four miles swim. Miles and then how long's the bike? One hundred twelve. One hundred twelve. Yeah. And then, and then how long is the run? Twenty six point two. Twenty six point two what? Mar marathon. Marathon. You have to do twenty six point two miles. Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. And how many miles is the whole race? One hundred forty point six. And you did yeah. that. Oh yeah. my goodness. I love it. That it, it, an insanely long and grueling race. And what some people don't know, uh, Chris, is that you've had to overcome a lot of adversity in your, your life. You have had to overcome some different adversity. And in fact, when you completed the Ironman, you became the Guinness world record holder as the first individual with down syndrome to complete this race and so here's my first our first big question for you chris what motivated you to even get into racing in the first place why did you do it um i do it for the fun um first of all i did it for fun um to my family to my people and to my community. And I wanted to um, gather those people in the Big East Valley to take back where I came from, uh, where I started. Special Olympics started the uh, Pride program. And to my people, to my family. In my community, most important, who I was and what has changed me. Uh, what changed me was uh, I had to overcome the muscle tone, today reaction, poor balance. I learned how to run by six years. And I recently got off with um, knee surgeries, five months open heart operation with two horns. I've never been called Down syndrome. A Down syndrome person becomes average. Average means playing fair games in Netflix. But um, now that 
uh, that surpass, uh, we're going to move on to the future. All right, stop there, Chris. I'm going to ask our next question. Good job. So, so you, you wanted to do it for yourself, your community, your, um, and really to show what's possible. What was your, what was your goal in, in accomplishing this? Why? Because my understanding, Dan, is that you came into Chris's life because he started to outrace, outrun um, his guide at the time. And uh, uh, Chris, you and your dad were out looking for a new guide to take you to the next level. Why go from just running triathlons to running the Ironman? Well, so the start, the triathlon was actually just an opportunity for Chris to get active and to get off the couch, like you said, to stop playing video games and watching Netflix and to go learn a, a habit of a healthy lifestyle. And then um, what ended up happening is he got too fast for his former coach, Simone, and he was looking to do a, a further distance. So he was going from a 10-mile race to a 25-mile race, and that's when I got involved. Now, the idea of Ironman was not there at that moment. That, that idea of Ironman came later. That I, idea of Ironman came when Chris started setting his dreams up for what his dreams would be um, and planning them out for the year. So, Chris, why don't you tell them, and it's important language here, that you understand the difference for, between a goal for Chris and his dream. So, Chris, why don't you tell these guys what your dream is? So the dream was not to become an Iron Man. Oh. And I had to do the Iron Man as um, a goal for my FICO towards my dream. And number one in my dream is to have an extra house. And then number two is to have a car. And then for number three, it's to marry Smoke and Hop Run from Minnesota, like my mom. <laughs> yeah. So tell, tell us why, like, why are those things important to you, Chris? Uh, because they are my community, my dream. And uh, I can't wait to be in this RN podcast with you. And, uh, I feel uh, at the moment we we need you guys to be included and not uh, on document this, but behind to those who are behind the scenes. So, Chris, I don't think you actually told them. What is your dream? The dream is to have a house. No, not that. What is your actual dream? Oh. To live a life of what? Um, it's your pen to me. That's right. So you want, your dream is not just to have a house. Your dream is to live what kind of life? Independent. To live an independent life. And then to live an independent life, you want to have your own luxury house? Yeah. And you want to have your own car? Yeah. And you want to have a smoking hot blonde from Minnesota? Yeah. Now, who, where's your mom from? Minnesota. And what color is her hair? Blonde. And so you want exactly what your dad has. And what does your dad have? Blonde. Right. But what, what, when you say a smoking hot blonde, what is that? That is uh, unconditional. It's a concept that means what to you? Unconditional. Unconditional what? Love. So you want unconditional love? Yeah. Yeah, those are good dreams, aren't they? Yeah. There you go, guys. That's that's incredibly powerful, isn't it, Joe? It really is, and I appreciate you sharing that with us, Chris. That's incredible. Um, I understand that you use this concept of the one percent rule, um, getting better by one percent. Chris, can you tell us what is what does that mean? Hey, Dan, don't tell him. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll start and then you finish. Is that cool? All uh, right, uh, cool. So the idea of 1% better is, see, Chris has some intellectual disabilities that prevent him from being able to do things like you and I can 
which is going from step one to step 10 all in succession. For him, he has, you know, um, issues with his brain, which is processing power, his ability to process a lot. So he has to practice doing the same task repetitively over and over and over again so that it could go from his conscious mind to his subconscious mind, and then he does it. So Nick's dad, Chris's dad, Nick, came up with a strategy called 1% Better. The idea behind that is that we're just going to do little pieces, little small pieces over time, which grow an amazing foundation. Now, what's interesting about the 1% is it's not just a strategy for completing an Ironman. It's a strategy for living a fulfilled life. Because, you know, a lot of your audience are business people, but you already know if you build a business overnight, how quickly can you lose it? Overnight. Overnight. But if you build a business slowly, 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 slowly over time, it takes a long time to lose it. It's the idea of, um, of someone who wins the lottery and then all of a sudden loses all their money when, and they end up living an unfulfilled life. And the reason why is they, they go to bed you know, without the skills of being a millionaire and managing that type of money. And then all of a sudden they have it, they don't know how to properly deal with it and then they lose it. But if you gain, you know, a million dollars over the course of 25 years, the same amount of money over 25 years, who did you become over the process of those 25 years? What lessons did you learn? Well, that's what we use to teach Chris the 1% better. And here's how we used it physically for him. So Chris, when you started, how many push-ups did you do? One. One? How many sit-ups did you do? One. And how many squats did you do? One. All right, so before we went to Ironman Florida, how many push-ups did you do? 200. 200 push-ups you did? Wow. 200. And how many sit-ups? 200. And how many squats? 200. Okay, and last week you and Marquise did a workout. How many push-ups did you do then? 312. 312. And how many squats did you do? 312. And how many sit-ups did you do? 312. And before we do Ironman Hawaii in October, how many push-ups are you going to do? 500. What? You're not doing 500. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here, Chris. And how many sit-ups are you going to do? 500. And how many squats are you going to do? 500. Right, and, he, and you're gonna do that by doing the 1%, right? Yeah. And so what are the rules of 1%? We just talked about these. Um, work hard. You have to work hard, what else? Eat more chipotle. Eat more chipotle, all right, what's the next one? <laughs> smile. Do everything with a smile because we don't like grouchy, grouchy athletes, right? Nope. And what's our last one? Make no excuses. And why not? Because we don't tolerate. Because we don't tolerate excuses, and your Uncle Dan loves you too much for what? Be average. That's right. Your Uncle Dan, your dad love you way too much to let you be average, so we're going to hold you to a high standard, right? Yeah. That's my boy. And did I hear that you're going to do another Iron Man, Chris? I am. I'm, a, I'm doing a half Iron Man in his city. I'm doing a half Iron Man in June. Half Iron Man in July, actually, yeah, two Half Iron Man in July, and then a full Iron Man in Hawaii World Championship, uh, New York City Marathon. Um, I'll be going to the USA Games, and I'll be going to uh, World Games in Germany. And so, then, yeah. yeah. You're not oh, done yeah. yet. No, oh, yeah. you, you're still going because you're on this journey. Uh, you're becoming, you're not average. You're exceptional as, as Dan was just saying. And as your dad, dad is saying, I want to go into the race a little bit um, because I want to get into your mind. Um, I understand that as you started the race, things started pretty well. But then at one point, um, there was a bike crash. Right? D t tell me a little bit about that. So, I was uh, riding carefully. I was uh, riding, so, riding pain, riding pain, riding pain, riding pain. By 40, I got to stand down. I got nutrition. 
and man, I mistakenly stepped on the ant pile. Oh. You stepped on an ant and, pile. Yeah, and there was uh, that's the first thing that happened to Dan. I put the blame on Dan for what he did to me. And then, so did the ant? Were the ants biting your legs and your feet? Yeah, yeah. And the, I, I assume that grown, that must have hurt, my right? My top foot, and then it went up to my groin area. So and what's then, going? What's going on, Dan, in your head when this when this happens? I mean, a bite crash, um, and then stepping on ants. It's like all this this preparation. And then you encounter this adversity. Like, walk us through that a little bit more. Well, I mean, the ants actually happened at mile 20. So okay. that was about an hour and a half into our race there, two hours into our into our bike leg. Uh, we had already did the swim in a little under uh, an hour and change there. Um, and so, uh, you know, then we, we got some nutrition and you got ants. You know, it was one of those things that you just can't plan for. You know, life is like that. Sometimes you have contingencies for everything you can plan for and you think about everything that could possibly happen. But no one that I, I've done 16 Ironman races and I've never heard of anybody, you know, getting bit by ants as a result of a race. So it's not something we planned for and it was something we had to overcome. Um, and it was a great life lesson for Chris because life happens like that, you know. And then and then 30 miles later, he's going too fast and he crashes his bike. Um it was unfortunate. He crashed his bike. It was really scary, but it was again another opportunity for Chris to either quit or to push forward on towards his dreams. You know, and as we get kind of go in to talk about the race, what I want you to continue to hear is this undercurrent that Chris has where he's very clear on what his dream is. Now he likes to talk about the flashy part, the car, the house, the wife, but his dream is to live a life of independence. And so He's not going to let anything stop him from living an independent life. Right, buddy? No. So on the run, what happened on the run? I had really, really much pain at my time. And I hit a wall. And my dad came out. He put me inside. He said, there's a barrier going on between the pain and the dream. And I had to commit a life-saving medical decision right there at that right time, at the right place. And I said, my dream. And my dad said, okay, I see the finish line, take the tether off down, and we're going to walk. And then my dad and I had a walk, the human connection. And then dad said, uh, can I trust you to take your son with me and may God send you his angels to take over him and take him home? And my dad's like, yeah. And then uh, Dan said, okay, son, you have to give me. All right, we'll stop there. We'll tell him that part. Your miles. Hey, Chris, stop. We'll tell him that in a minute. We'll tell him that part in a minute. That's the end, okay? So what Chris just said is at mile 10, he hit the wall. Most athletes hit the wall. It's not uncommon for folks to find this place where they start questioning themselves and saying, why am I doing this? The pain is so bad that I don't know what, if I really want my dreams. And Chris's dad came out and uh, asked him, Chris, you know, Chris, there's a, there's a battle going on right now between your pain and your dream. Which one are you going to choose? And Chris, which one did you choose? The dream. Chris chose the dream. And then what Chris alluded to is that his father said um, to me and the other athletes that were with, uh, there with Chris at the time, they said, God sent angels to be with my son. I'm going to let you guys take him home. And that was the moment of Chris, Chris's dad actually turning – all of the care over to me and realizing that there he would be only a distraction if he stayed with Chris and he had to let Chris and his angel me take him through the rest of the race and it took us about another 
three, three and a half hours to get to the finish line. And we never saw Nick, his father again. Uh, we had a lot of breakthroughs along the way. And now Chris is going to talk about here at the end. So when we were two miles out, uh, we had a timer with us because we were obviously knew we were going to be in the Guinness Book of World Records and Ironman had their own person with us the whole race. This is the first person with Down syndrome. They wanted to make sure nothing happened to him. They wanted to make sure that it was all legit. So they physically had a person on a bicycle. We had media with us from the, the before the race started all the way till after the race ended multiple film crews with us and um i didn't realize we were live but we were live a hundred thousand people were watching at, at that point um and i and i looked over at chris and i said I, well first excuse me I, I asked the timer how much time and they said you have roughly 54 minutes and you're about two miles out and that was the first time i gave myself permission to start enjoying the moment and up until then, I had one job, keep Chris safe, allow him to complete this race and change the world for people with Down syndrome like him. Yeah. And I looked over to Chris and I said, Chris, hey, buddy, we could walk it in right now. But we're not going to. And here's why. We need to set the bar really high for the next person with Down syndrome that comes behind you. I want them to have to beat you. Not because I want Chris to be competing with another person with Down syndrome, but because I want the next athlete with Down syndrome to not just be a finisher, but to be a competitor. I don't want to give them 17 hours to just finish. I want their goal to be to beat Chris's time. And then the next person with Down syndrome to beat their time and, just, and for it to keep going down. So eventually people with Down syndrome are just natural parts of our community. So Chris, do you remember what I said? Give me your what? I would give him personal best. Your personal best for two miles, and then what I tell you we would do at the end? I would hug his, I would, I would hug my uh, brothers. You would hug all your friends? And then so Chris gets energy by hugging people. He loves to hug people, is that right, buddy? Yeah. That's one of your superpowers, right? You like to give yeah. energy and get energy by hugging people. So when we got to what's called the finisher shoot, we had about a quarter of a mile left, but we had a lot of people there to watch us. So I let Chris go over and hug. Do you remember who you hugged first? Kiana. No, that's his favorite yeah. person that works for me. But no, it was, <laughs> it was all, of the, uh, all of the triathletes from your triathlon club, right? Yeah. Linda and, and, and Kelly and all those guys. And then who did we hug second? Kiana. That's when you hug Gianna, and who else? Alexis. Alexis, and who else? Mindy. Emily. Yeah. And the rest of my real estate team was there, so he got a chance to hug them. By the way, there were some guys there too, but he's not interested in talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then who did you hug last? Do you remember? You. No, well, that was who you hugged after we finished, but when we were going through the finisher shoot, do you remember who you hugged? Oh. Uh, my childhood friends. Your childhood friends that grew up with Chris. Um, when these guys were little babies with Down syndrome, he had two friends. What are their names? Abigail. Abigail and who else? Anna Marie. And he got to hug Abigail and Anna Marie and their moms. And it was wow. a very special moment. Nothing but tears in their eyes and the whole crowd's eyes because everyone with Down syndrome has been told their whole lives. And these families have been told their whole lives that your child's not going to amount to much. And now Chris is about to kick the door wide open of what's possible. And he has restored hope, not only in the folks that have Down syndrome now, but for the rest of humanity, people are going to be told they're going to have a child with Down syndrome and doctors are going to offer for them options. You know what those options are, right, gentlemen? Yes, sir. And, um, and those, fam those families are going to have, you're going to take a step back and they're going to say, well, what about that one boy that completed an Ironman? Well, why should we terminate this life? Or why should we feel like we're going to be burdened the rest of our life? Maybe, they'll, maybe our child will be just like Chris Nickich and make a real impact on the world. Dan, I, I, I got full body chills when you were describing the story of approaching the finishing line and not just finishing the race, but finishing it with some class and setting the bar. And I just love the vision that you have for the future. I'm curious to know what has, 
What has it been like as a coach working with an athlete with Down syndrome? How have you evolved, Dan? What have been your biggest takeaways through this process? Well, yeah, so thank you. Great question for me. And I'll say first off is um, I, I've only known Chris for about 14, 15 months. So I've, I've only known somebody with Down syndrome that long. I, I Before Chris, I never met a single person in 45 years of my life with Down syndrome. I never, I never met someone who had a kid that had Down syndrome or a cousin with Down syndrome. I didn't know anybody with Down syndrome. So this is all new to me, but I'll tell you that um, Chris has taught me a few things. So if I was to tell you, you know, like, what is one, one of my best friends in the whole world that just happens to have Down syndrome? What did he teach me? I would say, number one, that uh, to live in the moment. See, Chris doesn't live in the future. And he doesn't live in the past. His intellectual disability prevents that. And because of it, he, uh, he's always all in. Right, Chris? Yeah. You like doing these podcasts with your Uncle Dan? Yep. Because he's here with me. He just loves that, right? The next thing that he taught me is that you can resolve everything with a hug. That we should do more hugging. I don't, Chris doesn't care about the coronavirus. Do you care about coronavirus? Me too, Chris. You think it's ridiculous? <laughs> Are you going to hug people anyway? Yeah. Do you hug people when you're happy? Yeah. You hug people when you when you first see them. Yeah. You hug people when you say goodbye. Yeah. Do you sometimes hug people when you're a little sad? Yeah. How about if you're scared? Yeah. And what if you need comfort? What do you do? Yeah. And do you offer people hugs that need comfort? Yeah. Especially who? The vlogs. Of course, the vlogs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and, the, and the last thing that Chris taught me is that. Um, that your disability, somebody can tell you have, a di- you, you have a disability, but their impression of you does not have to be your reality. People, people's story about what you are or, or where you came from, that doesn't have to be your reality. This liter- your gentlemen, you're looking at the equivalent of Roger Bannister, the first person to run a four minute mile. You're looking at a person that not only you're looking at the equivalent of a Martin Luther King. You're looking at a, at a Christopher Columbus. You're looking at someone who, who has literally changed the world. He is the first of hopefully, you know, millions that will do what he's done. Um, and you're looking at him. And this is a, an opportunity that we may never get again as an opportunity to see somebody do something for the first time that appeared to be impossible. Literally impossible. If you knew the, the challenges that I had at his, as his coach from the triathlon community, while they were all supportive, they all would tell me he can't do it. He won't be able to do it. Um, there's no studies on Chris, his ability. There's no studies on, on anything. And uh, him, his family and Chris's willingness to do the impossible has 100% changed the world. And I'm just honored and blessed to have been open enough to be uncomfortable in a world that wasn't my own, that had no benefit for me to go along for that ride. And I hope yeah. a lot of other people choose to do the same. Yeah. Well, that's, you, you certainly, you, you certainly changed a lot of people's lives. Both of you, Chris, I have another question for you. If you're, if you're with someone who is doubting themselves. They don't think they have what it takes, or maybe there's people around them that say, you can't do it. What, what do you say to them? I say that um, we, need to, uh, we need to stop the world from holding us we need to fight against the world and we need to fight against the character. And we need to fight back so the child could live a life of dependence so the kid trying to become an eye man and be active and not to sit at home, 
be lazy, be grassy. It's a no no. Don't be lazy and don't be grouchy. I like that. And because your dream, Chris, is to live a life of independence and unconditional love, can you just can you just share um, with us what it meant to have your dad believing in you and pushing you your whole life? He has been pushing me ever since when I treated my special. He believed that um, the foster inquiry and have that syndrome would be pushing me even harder. He's uh, he owns a big consultant firm. He teaches his people how to get smarter, better, and faster. And he created the uh, achievement habit. This achievement habit is a long-term habit of an average person who sits at home being lazy and grouchy. We don't tolerate those things. Being active, being part of group, being part of who they are, become part of their family, become part of the community. We need to take back what's granted and we need to show others that they can do it too. If I do it, then those kids with Down syndrome, they will do I man. And if it's growing, dangerous, then their moms has to come up to me. And then the mom could say, Chris Nickets, word for word, Chris Nickets, like, um, they would like hashtag my name or all of our social media. You have your own hashtag. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have your own hashtag. Moms, if they dance in their kids. All right. They would say, Chris Nickets, can you trust my child? Through? Can you trust my child? To... Oh, good answer, buddy. Yeah. Hey, that's good. Yeah. Stop there. Yeah. I say, yeah. Hey, Chris, let him ask their last question. Come on. So, obviously, Ironman Hawaii is next, but I want you, I, I would like to ask you both this final question. It's the, it's the question we ask every guest. And we're about taking action on this podcast, about going all in on whatever it is that is someone's dream. If. What is the one thing that our listeners can do today to go out and get their dream? My advice is that over the past 18 years, our secretary overweight, 40 pounds, being lazy and grassy, is my advice to the parents. To not the kids to um, live independently, to be able to work hard, uh, to start small, to get one person better every day, to uh, give them a freaking smile, and to eat more chipotle. Whatever it takes, we are torn, ripped by two doors. We've been told by the doctors, experts, professionals, saying that they just not anything. We say no, we let them do whatever it takes to do whatever they want in life. I it's don't doctor. care what the doctor right. has them in life, but a child can well, do you- 
You you have God, you have challenged people, Chris, and you have you have really just changed um, me and Joe's life. We are honored to talk to you, and that is advice that everyone can go out and take action on. Um, Dan, what would you say? That same question: If someone wants to go out there and go after their dream, what's the one piece of advice you would give to them? Uh, to take that next step. Yeah, so I, I have a few thoughts there and then I'm gonna give you a wrap up as well. So first thing is I think you need to be, if, if the theme is being all in, then first is you have to be all in and identifying your dream. The, the number one reason why people don't accomplish their dreams is because another easier dream shows up. So it, it, was that ever really your dream or is that mom and dad's dream or are you just live in a life that someone else told you you should, and therefore you don't have the passion to see it through. You don't have the willingness to continue a race after you get bit by ants or a bike crash or you hit the wall. You quit because the dream was never really that big, and it was it's not going to push you through the tests of life. So go all in into figuring out what your dream is. Then once you know what your dream is, go all in, even if the rest of the world is not all in on your dream. And here's the reality. God puts a dream in your heart. That, that's, God did not put that same dream in your wife's heart or your husband's heart. So sometimes you have to have enough faith for them to grab onto your dream as well. Because if not, their first inclination is to not be in on, in on something that was not put inside of them. And the last part about being all in about this is, is once you've identified your dream, once you've started moving towards it, it's 100% follow the same formula you would follow in marriage. Number one is your wife would never allow you to keep an ex-girlfriend around in case things didn't work out, would they? I hope not. <laughs> they wouldn't allow you to, to be faithful 364 days out of the year and just unfaithful one day out of the year, would they? Right. So, they, so here's the deal. Once you're all in, that means there is no plan B in case things don't work out. And there is a 100% commitment into your dream. You follow those and I think you'll get there. Now, a lot of the things that I just talked about are outlined in Chris's book. It's called 1% Better. It's on the Amazon store. It's gonna be coming out in October. And we need all of your help because we want Chris to be the first person with Down syndrome to be a New York Times selling, uh, best New York Times selling author. And so to do that, we have to get a lot of pre-orders. So we got to start pre-ordering this book now. It's real cheap. It's on Amazon and it's called 1% Better by Chris and Nick Nickich, N-I-K-I-C. And I'd really appreciate it if your audience would buy a bunch of copies and, and send them out to their friends as well. Um, because not only does it, does it help Chris, but it helps everyone like him just get 1% better. Well, you can certainly count on David and I to um, go ahead and pre-order that book. Um, and we'll definitely get that out there to our listeners. I just want to say um, to both Chris and Dan, a sincere thank you for being who you are, for doing what you do, and for being willing to share your story. I know that our listeners um, are feeling as inspired as I am right now. So, so thank you. Thank you. It's our pleasure. God bless you. Say goodbye, Chris. Guys, go get them in Hawaii. Chris, oh, we'll be seeing you again. Dan, hopefully we'll see you at one of the big uh, KW conferences uh, coming up soon. Hey guys, soon. thanks for listening to this episode and of the All In Podcast. Listeners, as we always, want to invite you to find I all of today's resources any other from our show page we have ever at aipodcast.com. Podcast. We also ask that you take just one minute to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your, your podcasts. Dreams. This is how we grow go and how we're able to bring you the best content each and every week. Now go play All In. <laughs>